Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this, ugly, beat up, tarnished, white, essentially, and turn them into something like this. Picture perfect, crystal clear like a glass of water. Damn it. And also be going over when and how to tell when to start with the right disc. Yo, it's important. Stay tuned. Perfect. Let's get down to business. This is a 2015 Infiniti QX60. Very beautiful, very nice, intricate vehicle. Um, but one of the headlights, just one, is extremely fucked up like this. It looks like a piece of paper, right? Um, and guess what? Uh, we're starting with a P800, and I'll go into why we're doing that in a minute. But yes, uh, this vehicle has one headlight that is this bad, and the other one is actually kind of good, uh, good enough not to do a full headlight restoration on. I did it uh, for like next to free, uh, because uh, the other one I had to do a polish job on and just a, uh, you know, coating with a UV, um, you know, supplement like the Meguiar's or whatever, and it got most of the little blemishes out. Um, I don't charge particularly for that. Um, it's literally pennies on the dollar, um, you know, far as time. Um, so, damn near did it for free because, you know, once again, polishing headlights is worth about a, uh, a sack full of cat turds or some shit, right? So, I've just had to try to think of an analogy that properly represents how much polishing headlights is worth. Um, you know, it took me uh, five minutes and I got it back into a uh, shape where he'd be good with it for a while. But, anyhow. Um, starting with the P800, why am I doing that? Because one of the biggest rules I have to reiterate to you guys is you have to start, you have to evaluate the light and start appropriately. Okay, so uh, being uh, said that, I've already explained to you that the other light was, uh, you know, in good enough shape where I just had to, uh, you know, polish a couple pieces out and give it a, a preventative maintenance treatment is what I call it, okay, uh, to customers or whatnot. Uh, he called me out, me being the honest person that I am, he called me out to do both, and I told him, I'm not going to charge you what I told you I was going to charge you, because what I'm going to do to this headlight is not worth it. Now, you might have to call me back sooner than the other headlight, but I'm, I'm telling you, I can get it to where you won't need to do anything with it, hopefully, for as long as this light is going on. Because there was nothing wrong, and it, it is partially because of habits. Uh, you work in the same spot every day, you live in the same spot every day, so how much you know, and people are creatures of habits. They say, oh, that's my parking spot. Everybody at work, oh, Mike parks there. Or, you know, or, oh, Johnny parks over here. Or, oh, um, you know, that's Susan's spot. You know, you walk in and be like, damn, why did Johnny park at Susan's spot? You know, people are creatures of habits, even at work, even at home, whatever. You're parking the same way. You're backing into your driveway. You're pulling into your driveway a certain way. So what happens is one light, uh, from whatever his pattern was uh, throughout the life of this vehicle, um, has gotten a lot of sun and a lot of damage further than uh, other ones. It could be water spots. This uh, light was kind of speckled or whatever. Uh, so it could be water spots or whatever. His paint didn't have water spots on it, so I doubt it was that. Um, but... Uh, it just, you know, it's a, it's, it's a pattern thing, and, and humans are uh, creatures of habit. Uh, we do the same shit over and over and over every day. We like a certain way, and, and this is what we do. So anyhow, I ended up charging him way less, considerably uh, almost half, uh, for, um, you know, doing this headlight. Uh, not quite half, because uh, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, I just gave him a pretty big discount, because... Um, when you're doing a headlight, it's like two of them are this much because I have to come way across town and do whatever. One of them is going to be more expensive than doing two of them. Okay, it's just like if you go to like McDonald's or somewhere else, uh, you know, you get a value meal. It's cheaper. All these things are cheaper than what they would be if you buy them by themselves. It's a business thing. If you're charging like, okay, I'll give you half down the middle. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, one costs this much and two is at a prorated or discount rated uh, price when you're doing one. So that's what was going on. But this headlight here, why am I starting with the P800? Can you think of any reasons? I'll give you a minute.
Okay, that's long enough. I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, you have to check out this video here. Okay, this video tells you the hardest headlights to do versus the easiest headlights to do. I believe this one was one of the easiest ones, like either 9 or 10 or something like that um, on the video far as the easiest or least hardest, shall we say. So one of the easiest headlights to do. Even though it's not easy, it's one of the easiest settings of headlights. Why? Because you can skip a step. Um, the other headlight had, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of its clear coat intact. It just had the surface blemishes. This headlight has about 99, that is the opposite. It has 99.9% .9 of the um, clear coat gone. Okay, so we didn't have to do much by way of removing the clear coat, which is typically the hard part. Um, you know, anything, any headlight is typically softer, even the hard ones, even those Kias, even those Mercedes. The, um, the actual headlight is softer than the clear coat that is put on there by rule of thumb. Uh, so you, I didn't have to do much with this light far as removing that. Right now, I'm just... Uh, removing a little bit of the surface of uh, the polycarbonate of the you know the actual surface of the headlight, whereas a normal headlight restoration you would be having to go through all of the messed up clear coat. Well, that has been eroded from this headlight. So there's like you know 0.01 percent of um, clear coat left on this headlight, which is pretty much none. If you could just think of it as no uh, clear coat left. So um, I just had to resurface the polycarbonate. And all that takes is a P800. Um, if it's not extremely damaged. And this is the thing. It, it comes with time and it comes with experience. Okay. But if it's not extremely damaged on the surface like that. Which this one you saw how smooth and and uh, you know f you know soft it looked. There was no big divots. There was no dips. There was no impact fractures or no weird things like that it was just a naked polycarbonate headlight so i pretty much skipped the beginning step the p500 so uh you have to know what to start with okay you have to evaluate that that's one of the most important things of this process when you go to a vehicle or you're going to random vehicles or whether you're just doing your own vehicle you have to assess that because if i would have started this vehicle uh which i have before and which i've done in the past but right now i'm really focusing on um you know adjusting and 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 you know doing an investigation to see uh what i can really start with and you always want to start with the lowest possible okay uh but like i said before i have done lights like this starting with the p500 and it's just gonna make your time longer it's just gonna make the headlight harder to do and it's gonna make it harder for you to get that perfect finish in the end that perfect clear finish without uh any blemishes without you having to go over it again and again and again because if i start with a heavy grit i'm just gouging out the actual headlight surface the polycarbonate okay um and then I have to clean up all that and take off more to do that. Being experienced and knowing uh, I can start with a lower grit, I don't have to worry about that. This headlight is um, pretty much, you know, smoothing everything out and smoothing everything out again. That's it. No demolition stage. So it made this headlight a lot smoother and a lot easier to uh, finish, and a lot. Um, it, it still have to go through the steps, so you're only you're only taking off a couple minutes of your time. But all the other steps, you're taking off a couple minutes of the time as well because there's less shit to fix, right? It's very smooth. On a luxury vehicle like this, it's, this vehicle is beautiful. It has all this technology, this plus stuff. It had me looking at it like, damn, I want to get one of these. Um, I love Infinity as well, by the way. Um, I love all the high-end um, vehicles of any, uh, you know, vehicle. Um, you know, the, you know, these are high ends. This is a base, essentially a high end Nissan. Okay. I like the, um, high end Toyotas, which of course is Lexus, my own vehicle, um, which is an, you know, a high end Honda, which is an Acura. Uh, essentially it's a, it's a Honda, uh, you know, Cadillacs, all these things like that. Um, I like, okay. That's just, that's just my preference. They're uh, quality vehicles. They're the next level, right? Expensive, but inherently more beautiful. Okay. So, um, but this vehicle is uh, top-notch. You'll see it at the end. You'll see how pretty it is or whatever. Um, it's a very...
dark midnight blue with a little bit of sparkle in it and it has this nice ass interior and these rims on it it's just a really great looking vehicle so with that you know you need to have really great looking headlights you have to have that top notch so um you don't want to fuck around and, and start gouging out shit because you started with the p500 you can't be um it is a system it is a method but you have to be flexible you have to educate yourself and uh, do that initial inspection to see what i have to do to get this light correct what do i have to do to get this light correct and have it be the easiest for me because the easier it is for you the better it is for you to uh express yourself or express your talent on the headlight okay um, if it's hard, difficult, those things, those are when it gets hard. When those hard, difficult lights is because people get frustrated, because it takes a long time, because you're tired, because you don't know what's going on, and I'm, and you, you know, you're frustrated. So sometimes those lights won't come out as perfect as you want. Um, even if you have a, a threshold of perfection, there's different levels of perfection. Even in my work, um, you know, it, it, it's very consistent. I settle for nothing but the highest level of perfection. And I get that every time, but sometimes it's harder because other lights frustrate me. So I have to keep playing with them, playing with them until I get that level. Um, this light like this was very pleasurable. It was easy uh, because I made the right call to start with the P800. Uh, I had people in, in, uh, commenting in the um, uh, last video that I made saying that I can't believe you uh, didn't do it with the P220. Uh, this and that because it's a really hard Kia or whatnot. Um, but what I do is try to start with the lowest grip possible. Sometimes, um, you know, like I said, I will do seven or eight of a lower grit when I know I can just put on a heavier grit. Like, you know, if, like on that last, like I said, I'll use five or six P320s before I jump to 220Y because 220 is just going to be a headache. It's going to make your job harder after you use that. So... In a rule of thumb, if I could just use more of these, because it's going to take more of these to get off this coating, it's going to be a much easier cleanup. The least you have to use within reason, okay, you don't want to uh, bleed your pocketbook by by doing a super hard light with, with uh, all these uh, P800s because it gets expensive. Oh yeah, but by the way, have you guys seen me use this yet? You probably haven't. You're going to be seeing me use this a couple times. I've been experimenting with this uh, off film, and it works pretty damn good. I kind of like to use this on premium headlights that don't need too much work um, done. Uh, this is um, a Meguiar's product. This is uh, part of their professional line, um, and it's really good product. It'll kind of throw you for a loop because it's really watery, okay? But at the same time, it works pretty damn damn good and you're gonna see that here in a minute uh, this is the first time you guys have seen it um, and just watch it check it out once again any um, thing I'm showing you on here at this point um, I let you know if it's a yay or an a nay or if it's approval but if I'm showing it on here most of the times it's it's a yay um, because uh, the other ones that I don't approve of I, I kind of it's hard to explain but the best way I can explain it is um, when you buy the right tool for the right job, you pretty much know it's going to work. If you're sitting there like, oh, here's shoe shine polish, or here's aluminum polish I'm going to try on a headlight. It's 50-50. Who knows? Shit, I don't know. And nine times out of ten, it's not the right uh, product for uh, the job, not the right tool for the job. Uh, but when you buy a product that is made from a company that is reputable, not uh, Jimmy Smith's uh, Headlight Restore or some shit like that, right? If it's Mogwires or 3M or 3D or some big company like this that has millions of dollars in R&D and millions of dollars in test and development and shit, um, you know, it's pretty it's pretty easy to tell it's going to be a good product, okay? This is their highest, uh, one of their, their, pretty much their highest line, the professional line. And it's a, it's a headlight polish. It's a hard plastic polish or hard clear plastic polish, all right? So when it says those words like that, that means it's going to be awesome like this. And then, of course, I run all my tests on it. I, I touch it. I feel it. I smell it. And it has that slickness and it has that strong diesel smell. That means it has a lot of UV protectant in it and it has a lot of beneficial things for headlights and it's it, it's it's pretty much for headlights it's 
is pretty much for headlights without staying on the uh, bottle for headlights, okay? Because it, it's, it's, what else is on a fucking vehicle that is clear plastic? Name something. Exactly, it has you thinking. There ain't shit on the fucking vehicle that is ever clear plastic. There's nothing that's clear see-through plastic on a video, on a, on a, um, on a vehicle. There's not much. So it's pretty much made um, from a vehicle car care company, and it's called Clear Plastic Polish. So therefore, I'm pretty sure it fucking works. And uh, believe it or not, this shit kicks ass. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, without showing you the end part, with you know, before showing you the end part, that this is a five star approved product, and it is in the bio. Um, this kicks ass. It's it's even though it's thin. It uh, holds a lot of lubrication value far as uh, polishing, and it takes a little bit longer, a little bit more polishing with it, but it has such a amazing, clear, uh, silky tone to it after you polish it. Um, it works uh, extremely well. It's uh, definitely five-star, you know, it has my approval and my stamp on it, and um, I would recommend using this for um, any headlight restoration. Of course, uh, one of the alternatives, my original go-to, although I might have like 20-something bottles of it in the garage, and I don't have to worry about it probably for the rest of this year, if not the rest of next year. Um, other things are on that level or near that level, okay? This one is one of them that is really near that level, okay? It's a beautiful product, and once again, I got it from Amazon. I get 99% of my tools, supplies, and products from Amazon, and that's what's uh, in the bio. That's what's in the links. It's direct link from Amazon, and even if you don't purchase anything, if you're not ready to purchase it at that moment or whatever, um, if you go into the links, you can see all of the products. You can see uh, what their star rating is on Amazon, how many people have liked it, or all the stats on it. You can see what this is, and you can see what that is. So you don't necessarily have to purchase the shit from Amazon or I mean, it would be great if you purchase it through uh, the Amazon links on my page or whatever. But if it's just a, it's just a cross reference as well, you can just look and see what it is. Okay, you can look and and you know uh, educate yourself about it and know every single thing about what it is that I'm using, whether it's the drills, whether it's this product here. But look at this shit. Look at this sidebar. Look at this. God damn, this stuff works really freaking good. I really like this uh, product. I really really like this product. It's probably one of my favorites i probably would say um if you just take mcguire's uh if you take my um if you take my 3m that i my go-to my my most perfect one i said before out of the equation this one is definitely probably my top two or three that i like and if you go in there it's fairly inexpensive uh you know as far as the tide pool of these headlight polishes it's fairly inexpensive for the amount that you get surprisingly so check that out if you will um you know there's many different options or whatever in the bio uh like i said uh the closer you can get to something saying headlight polish if you can't find something that says headlight polish the next best thing uh or the equally best thing is going to be something that says clear plastic polish uh, you know, or hard, clear plastic polish, something wrong, those uh, terminologies or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, when people are saying, I'm going to use uh, fucking guitar polish on here, people just do dumb shit. Don't be one of those people that just put stuff on there. And it's like, why use guitar polish when there's like, uh, I, I would estimate like maybe seven dozen, you know, headlight polishes or things that translate to headlight polish. Um, you know, like you say, I'm not going all into that, uh, but you know why, you know, people still use these old methods when there was nothing out there in the, you know, the eighties, the nineties, the early two thousands, there was no products for headlights. They just overlooked this. So people had to use what they can use and their shit came out. Okay. Not as good as it can come out today. Not, nothing like this. Um, but that's only cause they had no, you know, knowledge of this. They had no tools to buy. They had to use the 2k clears. They had to use the vehicle clear code. They had to use all these things. They had to use Brillo pads and, and, you know, all kind of dumb shit on headlights. Now there's so many products out there. It's like, why would you, you look silly using something that's not made for headlights, right? You look freaking damn right ridiculous using something that isn't designed for headlights when there's thousands of, pro hundreds of products, if not thousands, out there on the market. 
uh, and just it's a liability it's a legal issue and I, I just did a lawyer's vehicle and we we're speaking about that and he was like you're absolutely right and I did record his because it was in the rain I did it uh, this past weekend but uh, we were talking about it. he's actually a law student about to become a lawyer because he's obviously going to graduate um, but uh, I, was, I was telling him, like, yeah, I use this, this, and that, because he was asking, and I, and I was like, yeah, it's a liability if you use something else. So I was like, these guys put this 2K clear meant for, uh, you know, furniture varnish or the vehicle clear code, and then something goes wrong, and then the insurance adjuster comes out there and checks it, or he confesses that he used some bullshit on the headlight. He, he's in trouble some way or another because uh, it's not supposed to be on headlights. And they're going to be like, why the hell would you use that when there's... You know, they put on the list 396 products that are made for headlight restoration. Don't be a dumbass like that. Stay tuned. <laughs>